Welcome. This video covers correlation analyses. Our goal with correlation analysis is to just determine if there's a linear association between two numeric variables. Correlation is a unitless measure of the strength and direction of the linear relationship. We saw how to create this using proc core, but we just didn't look at the tests and intervals that you could do for the population value itself. Um, so we should have an idea what we call these population and sample values. So the population value, if I could measure everybody from my population and then look at the correlation, we call that value rho. So this is the Greek symbol rho. And the sample value, we usually use um, a lowercase or an uppercase r to represent that. And again, the idea with inference is what we want to do is take this sample version, this thing that we get from the sample, and try to use it to make statements or claims about the population value rho. So that's what we're going to get into with this video. We've already looked at the idea of scatter plots as a great way to look at the relationship between two variables. And then we looked at correlation, sample correlation, as a way to then quantify that sort of linear relationship that we do see. We made these plots with proc sg plot, but we can also make them with proc core. That's another option. So for this analysis, we're going to stick strictly in proc core. So um, with proc core, we've already looked at the statements um, that are associated with it, but let's just go into them in a little bit more detail and see what options we commonly use. One commonly used option that's going to be really, really useful for us um, that will automatically create some really nice plots for us is after the proc core statement and we specify which data set we want, we can do plots equal matrix hist. And this is going to give us a matrix of scatter plots as well as a histogram down the um, diagonal. If we want to get uh, confidence intervals for our um, correlation coefficients, uh, we can use the Fisher statement here as well. We'll go into these in a little bit more detail in just a second. We also have um, the by statement, which we can use to find correlations at each level of a uh, categorical variable. So that's a pretty common statement you can use in a lot of different procedures. And then we just specify which variables we actually want to find the correlations between with that bar statement like we did before. All right, we need a data set to analyze. Uh, we're going to consider a new data set we haven't seen before. So this is a banking data set from Australia. Um, and this is uh, information about their financial variables and their share prices um, from October 91 to uh, August 97. And those variables include um, the share price index for the bank and then share prices for a number of things. And so this is going to be considered sort of our response variable, if you will. Although with correlation analysis, you don't really need a response variable. But this all ORDS is really sort of a total market barometer for the Australian stock market. So that's the overall one that we care the most about. And then there are a bunch of other variables that are measured here as well. So we might, these are all going to be numeric variables. And so we might try to understand the linear relationships we see between them. So uh, we will import that data set. It's located in our shared folder here. So you'll be able to use this code or something very similar to it to um, import that. I'm going to put it in my NCSU library. So I've set up my NCSU library as a data set called banking. Once I've done that, I can go to proc core, specify that data set. And then notice again that I'm going to use this plots equal matrix hist um, option on my proc core statement. And that's going to create these lovely plots that you see over here. It gives us a matrix of scatter plots. So you can see we have scatter plots between all of our variables, but then we also have a histogram of the variable itself um, going down the diagonal. So this really does give us quite a bit of information about these variables that we specify. And if we're just looking at this, we can see that there is a very strong linear relationship here, right? This is pretty strong, pretty linear. There appears to be some linear relationship here between all ORDs and retail, but it's not super strong. And then there's a slight negative relationship here between all ORDs and unemployment. So we're gaining some information here, but we might want to do tests for the population values. We might want to understand whether we can say that the correlations that we're seeing are significant, significantly different from zero or not. So here's the, output, the rest of the output that you get from Proc Corp. The top part is just some summary stats, which are useful, but not really what we're going after in this case. But down here, this is where you'll actually get your p-values Four different tests. And so you might notice that there's a p-value associated with every combination of our variables. So between all ORDs and energy, this p-value right here is representing the test of whether or not that correlation is significantly different from zero. So all of these tests are doing a test of whether, they're zero, whether that correlation is zero or whether it's not equal to zero. And so you can see that with all ORDs, there is a significant relationship between energy 
and retail, and then also unemployment as well. If we wanted to interpret those values, we can interpret them as you see down here below. So um, we obviously have the strongest value of the correlation here between all ORDs and energy, it's 0.926. So we'd say that there's a strong positive relationship with energy prices and all ORDs. Retail is about 0.45, so that's in the middle range. So you might say there's a moderate positive relationship, positive linear relationship, I should say. And then um, we go over here to all ORDs and unemployment. And this one's actually negative and it's pretty strong. So we would say that there's a strong negative relationship, linear relationship with um, unemployment. And that all makes sense, hopefully, with um, what we saw in those scatter plots, right? The first two had positive trends, and the last one had a negative trend. But again, these p-values give us a way to do a formal statistical test. We can also get confidence intervals, although we do have to change what we're doing just a little bit. So we're going to add that Fisher statement on our proc core statement, uh, sorry, the Fisher option on our proc core statement. And what that does is it does a transformation of our correlation. So this is our sample correlation that we found before. It does a transformation and gives us this new correlation estimate. Usually they're pretty close um, to what you see over there. But then we get a 95% confidence interval for each one of those correlation values. So I would be 95% confident that the actual correlation between all ORDs and energy falls between 0.88 and 0.95. So again, confidence intervals are wonderful. They give you a range of values for that population value. All right, so that's the basic analyses that you might do for correlation. Um, I, we did talk about this idea of doing Spearman's correlation before, so let's just um, look at that in a little bit more detail. Remember that Pearson's correlation is what you get by default, and it's great, except it's not really robust to outliers. So if you have some really um, outlying observations, it can cause Pearson's to be a little bit skewed. And so Spearman's, rather than using the actual data values themselves, use the, uses the ranks of the data points and then calculates the correlation based off those ranks. What do we mean by that? Well, if we had our actual data over here, so this is our actual data on the left, we had our X and our Y values. Pearson's correlation, which is the default, would just find the correlation between those variables there, that X and that Y. And that's fine, but you might notice that one of these values is really, really large and sort of out there. And so that value is going to have a great effect on the, the resulting value of the correlation coefficient that we get. What Spearman's does, on the other hand, is says, well, let's get rid of the actual data values, and let's not worry about those, but let's rank the observations in terms of smallest to largest. So this is the smallest x value here, so we're going to rank it as 1. The next smallest one is 2.5, so we're going to rank that as 2, and so on and so forth. So we're just going to look at the ranking of each one of these observations and use those as the, as the data points that we then find the correlation with. So notice that now this 100, which is the largest observation over here, only takes on the value 5, so it's only one different from the next lowest instead of being you know, 96.8 different from the next lowest. We do the same thing with the Y's, right? So we're just getting the Y ranks. And by finding the correlations between these ranks, it's going to be more robust to having these really outlying data points. How we get that output, just like we did before, we're just going to add the Spearman option on the proc core statement. And now you can see it says that these are Spearman correlations, and so the p-values um, and the estimates associated here are now for this, uh, using the Spearman way to estimate these things rather than the Pearson way. We usually do end up seeing roughly the same thing unless you have some really large outliers. And so here we're seeing roughly the same um, information. And so that wraps up um, the ideas of correlation analysis. Let's jump into SAS and just see a quick example. All right, here we are in SAS, ready to do some correlation analyses. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my library that we've been using throughout the semester. And one nice thing is um, we're going to have access to all the data sets that we've been saving in there. And we actually have that wine data set that we looked at previously in here as my wine. So we'll just do some correlation analyses um, with this. And you can see, like we saw before, there are tons and tons of numeric variables there. So we could look at lots of different numeric relationships um, and investigate the linear relationship between them. So I'll just do proc core, give it that data. So ncsu.mywine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the Fisher statement so we can get confidence intervals. And then I'm just going to specify which variables I care about. So maybe we'll do alcohol. Uh, we'll do citric acid. We'll do pH. And then we'll also do quality. Because quality is really usually what we'd consider our response here. All right, let's just run that little chunk of code. 
didn't spell things right, apparently. Oh, yes, I have to put this in special quotes. Apologies. Run that. All right, check our log. Everything looks good there. We go into our results now. And as, let me zoom in here. Again, we get our sample stats above, which is really nice, right? We just know what our sample means, our standard deviations are. You know how many observations there are in each group. All very useful. We go over here, we get our tests for the linear relationship. So this is the sample correlation, very, very close to zero. So as our sample correlation is very close to zero, the p-value is pretty large. And so we would fail to reject the assumption that the, that the uh, true correlation between these two is zero. So we don't have evidence against that assumption. If we look at alcohol versus pH, that has a much higher correlation, sample correlation, but it's still a pretty weak relationship, 0.12. But that is significantly different from zero. So we have a significant correlation between alcohol and pH. And between alcohol and quality, ooh, that's already, that's pretty high. That's up to what I would refer to as more of a moderate relationship. And that is, again, significantly different from zero. So that's how we can read that table up there. And then using that Fisher option on the proc core statement, we get these confidence intervals, which are super useful um, as giving us a range of values for that population correlation. And again, um, quality is our variable of interest for the most part. So maybe we're, we'd be more focused on these last two rows and, and the alcohol quality role, row. But this would be now we're 95% confident that the population value of the correlation coefficient between alcohol and quality is between 0.42 and 0.46. So we've now gained some useful insight about this. All right, to recap, if I wanted to do a correlation analysis, I can use proc core, um, and that Fisher option is really useful because it's going to give us a confidence interval. Now, again, we have not covered the assumptions that underlie these tests and these intervals. That's something you would do in the classwork that we have. But now you have an idea how to go about doing a correlation analysis.